Thanks for being here today. We're obviously here for a really important conversation, uh, and I just want to kind of frame a little bit of our time together, uh, and we're going to hear from two uh, great uh, people to just hear from on this topic. Uh, Kelly Coors is the director of the Metropol Department of Metropolitan Development in Evansville, uh, and he has become an expert on black history in Evansville, and that's going to be an opportunity for us to just listen and learn. Uh, and then Ubi Natewo is going to help us think about moving forward. Did I get that right, Ubi? Uh, nailed it. Okay, good. Um, so Ubi, I'll tell you a little bit more about him later, but he's going to help us kind of move forward. So what we're doing today is we're looking back and we're looking forward with our speakers. And so my job is to help us uh, kind of ground ourselves in what's going on right now and what our current reality is in Evansville. Uh, but before I get to that, I just want to share a little bit about for Evansville, so you know who we are, what we do, and a little bit more context. And then I'm also going to share uh, just a, some things that have been on my heart that I want to share with you guys. So first, uh, the For Evansville vision is not an organizational vision. It is what we would say, what would happen if heaven came to Evansville? And we could describe that without using biblical language that we might use in our church families. Uh, so we say, we think if heaven were to come to Evansville, if E was really for everyone and everyone had the chance to flourish, what would that actually look like? Uh, so we want to see the tri-state um, area or the city we live in be a place where every person experiences love and gives love, where every person prioritizes the holistic well-being of all people. And we want, to, we want to see a city where every person has work that provides community value and individual purpose. And our theory and our thought is if those things are happening, wherever that's happening, people want to live there. That's a city where they want to live. That's a place where they want to belong. It feels like we were made for a place like that. Uh, so you can see our mission is really about helping people come together to solve our city's most pressing needs. Uh, we do three things. Uh, we convene. We try to create opportunities like this in a neutral space for us to build some relationships and engage some important conversations. But we want to see relational trust among our church leaders and beyond that to leaders in our community as well. Uh, we cultivate, which is a really vague, broad word for a lot of things. Uh, but for what we are thinking about is we want to we want to create the conditions that make collaboration more uh, likely to happen and to be more effective. So if there's a barrier that we can uh, knock down, we want to knock it down. If there's a system we can help build, that, create that, we want to do that. So we, we also think it has a lot to do with our mindset and our attitude and how we think about outcomes versus outputs and things like that. So there's a lot that kind of falls in cultivate. And lastly, we storytell. Some of you guys might have seen the, f the films that we've done under Left Turn Productions. Uh, that storytelling aspect is helping us see things as they are and also giving us a compelling vision of what they could be. We're trying to inspire empathy uh, and really love of neighbor in a way that anyone in our city can really grab that and think about it and to spark dialogue. Uh, one of the, the films we did at Left Turn 2 actually addresses the topic we're trying to get at today, which is what does it look like to pursue racial reconciliation, to understand one another, uh, and to really try to... Um, raise the level of empathy in our community, and we created it as a dialogue starter. We know that it's not a super accurate depiction, depending on where you might land on what you think is going on in our world right now related to black and white relationships, uh, but we felt like it was, we wanted to target the people who wanted to explore the conversation, uh, and this would be a good way to do that. So that's left turn two. I wanted to celebrate as well some of the really cool things that you guys have been doing. Uh, these are things that Fort Evansville has also been connected to. But my hope was, you know, this is a heavy conversation. I heard last night also that Americans report being uh, uh, as unhappy as they've ever been in 50 years. Uh, and that was before George Floyd was killed. Uh, and so we're kind of in this moment in our, in our culture and in our country where you know, people are not very happy. There, there's really, there's a lot going on. There's another thing I saw that talked about how 2020 started as uh, 1974 with all the impeachment conversation. Uh, and then it moved into 1918 with the pandemic. Uh, and now we've gone to, um, what did they say? No, 1968 uh, with kind of the protests and where things are on our racial dialogue. Uh, and I'm missing one more. What was the other year? 
Um, anyways, uh, there's just a lot happening already in the first half of 2020. And so as church leaders, uh, it's our job to help people navigate this from a gospel-centered perspective. So I wanted to celebrate, like, what are some cool things that have been going on because of all this stuff? Uh, one that we really wanted to celebrate is this need a neighbor. Um, hey, I can move that in. You guys can see it better. Uh, need a neighbor, if you guys aren't familiar, was just a, a system that was really really created by Community One, and we kind of helped get it out to you guys as well, uh, just to help people love their neighbor in our community, just to make it very simple to go out and provide food, give a phone call, pray with somebody, uh, help them find financial assistance. Uh, the response fund of Greater Evansville is a really cool thing to see a lot of collaboration coming together, um, church leaders being involved in that as well, and uh, just a really neat thing. Uh, and then we had two, I, I know of at least two, uh, visible unity Easter expressions that happened in 2020 that were really, really cool. One was on 14 News that produced a uh, kind of a smattering of things together from six different churches and totally different backgrounds. And then we also had uh, an Easter service that was, um, I don't know, 12 or 20 churches coming together to use the Eastland Mall parking lot to worship together on that day. Uh, so some really cool things there. And then lastly, I wanted to mention Charity Tracker. Um, it's a shared database that some nonprofits are using and at least one church is using uh, right now that helps our community know how people's needs are being met so that we reduce duplication and we don't keep people in a place of poverty, but we help them move out of dependence. And I'm really excited about that. And I think every church needs to look at it. Um, one of the things we do I mentioned earlier is we knock down barriers for collaboration. Evansville just went ahead and paid for our community to use that for free right now. And so if you are interested, I would love to tell you more about that at another time. Charity Tracker, shared database could really help you, especially around benevolence and how you're uh, assisting people financially in the community. So what's our current reality uh, when we look at what's going on racially in Evansville? Uh, in 2019, we put together a state of e-report that highlighted five areas of, that we felt like were exponentially holding us back from being a place that's for everyone or a place where that vision of what it would look like for heaven to come to Evansville, what's keeping us from that? Uh, one of the things that we highlighted was racial unity. We want to see racial unity in our community. And so this is just uh, one demographic and reality that we can look at. There's others, but I want to share this with you. There's obviously a pretty big disparity um, in the median income by ethnicity in our community. And I'm pretty sure this is Vandenberg County. I don't know that it's the whole region, uh, just for reference. Uh, but you can learn more about some of the, the reality of what's going on here um, at the State of Your Report, and it's our goal to continue to help us see the community's needs and dreams. And sorry, Chad, I'm in your way. <laughs> and, and really have a healthy understanding of we have to know where we are in order to move toward where we think we're being called to go and what we're tr really trying to create in our community. And so I wanted to um, actually, Ansley, do you have my phone back there still? I'm going to need that. Um, I wanted to share just a couple things from my heart that, that I feel like God's really been stirring up in me, and it's related to Ephesians 2. So I just wanted to read some passages to you guys to kind of set up our time. And then after that, uh, Kelly Coors will come up. And during Kelly's presentation, thanks, Ansley. This is our volunteer that showed up today when I asked her. So you guys can thank Ansley for being here. So Kelly will uh, come up after I'm done. And during that time, we'll be able to eat and listen. And the SOST staff and crew are gonna come and serve you at your table uh, to keep you safe and to keep them safe, I guess. And so we'll, we'll be able to do that together. But Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 might be one of the most familiar passages to you in Scripture. It's one of my favorites. It has the biggest but in the Bible, if no one's ever told you that before. Uh, it's in verse 4. And uh, it starts like this in verse 1. And you were dead. You were lifeless. And it describes what that lifeless life was like. And then it says in verse 4, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
And then it goes on to maybe the, one of the most famous passages or verses in Scripture. In verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And then one of my favorites is verse 10, uh, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared before him that we should walk in them. And so that's what God has made us for, is these good works, and he has lavished his grace upon out of his love, even when we were dead. And I think Paul has in mind a plural sense of that. And then he continues in verse 11 and the rest of the chapter, which in my Bible is called One in Christ. And he goes on to describe two groups of people that were separated, that didn't get along well, didn't understand each other, had different cultural backgrounds, different uh, ways of seeing the world. And this is what he says. But now in Christ Jesus, this is verse 13, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace. He is our peace, and who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. And this stuck out to me because as I, as I scan social media and as I listen to people in the news talk about Racial tension, one of the things that I believe is missing, one of the reasons I asked Ubi to talk today, is that the reality is reconciliation is needed. And the good news is reconciliation has already been won in the flesh and body and blood of Jesus. And if you're in Christ, you're one with one another. And there's a reality that is present that we need to recognize. And it requires work on both sides, of course, when there's two people in conflict. We got to work that out together. But the good news is Jesus has broken down that wall of hostility. And I think it's the belief of people in this room that we really won't move forward until we demonstrate that as the church of Evansville, as we demonstrate that as people who follow Jesus, who are brothers and sisters in Christ. And he goes on in verse 16, that he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing Not his body, but the hostility. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, and you are members of the household of God. You are family. What we have separated, he has joined together. And he reminds us at the very end that that house is built on the foundation of of scripture and the cornerstone himself, Jesus Christ. In verse 21, it says, in him, the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the spirit. So we're being built together and that's our current reality and that's what we're working on. That's why we're here today. That's why you guys came out of social distancing to be together. (laughs) You know, that's why we wanted to eat together and that's why we wanna engage this conversation. And I just want to encourage you to share that reconciliation happens in Jesus. Because we are the only ones who have that message. And our faith tells us that we can't move forward as well as everybody wants to. And to see that vision that we talked about where everyone prioritizes the holistic well-being of all people, well, the church ought to demonstrate that first.